everybody. Um, welcome to this week's, week's 10 Minute Trends hosted by Direct Agents. My name is Megan Conahan. I'm the EVP at Direct Agents. And I'm Jackson Richards, Director of Strategy with Direct Agents. Um, now, before we begin, um, as always, if you guys have any questions while we're going through, please feel free to chat them. And if we have some time, we'll try to get to them. Um, so today we're going to cover three main things. One is a Facebook boycott, uh, 2020 holiday planning, and then Walmart Plus. Um, okay, so first things first, um, the Facebook boycott. So uh, many brands who obviously decided to pause Facebook in support of the Stop Pay for Profit campaign were mostly doing so for at least the month of July. Sadly, July is almost over. <laughs> so um, what are we seeing now? What are brands going to do? Are they going to continue with the pause? Are they restarting, Jackson? You know, you know, what have you been seeing kind of out there in the space? And then what does this also mean for the overall kind of Facebook ecosystem. Yeah, man, I, I, you just pointed out that July is almost over. It's, it's hard I don't to believe. Talk about it. Uh, so I think what we've seen is a lot of the smaller, medium-sized brands, they either never um, pulled advertising um, from Facebook, and if they did, it, it, was, it was small. Um, I think, you know, a lot of larger brands were the ones that participated most actively in uh, this boycott or the, you know, stop hate for profit movement. Some of those brands committed to just doing so for July. So I think we're going to see uh, many brands return in August. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, especially, you know, especially the small and medium sized ones that, you know, only pulled back a little bit. I think they're going to return in full force in, in August. And then I think even some of the major brands, um, the major international or major national corporations, holding companies, I think they're going to come back in August. But there will be some of those larger brands that do hold out. And I think it'll be mostly the ones that where, you know, summer or kind of the back to school time is not their peak revenue season um you know i think that some of the larger brands will hold out for a few more months um hopefully they'll get some concessions from facebook and and both sides can kind of claim a, a victory here um because i think when it comes time for q4 holiday season shopping it's going to be it's just too big of a channel a revenue driving channel for even the larger brands to sit out i mean i think the reason that we didn't see most small or medium-sized businesses is pull out is as they relied too heavily on instagram and facebook as revenue driving channels um and when it comes time for q4 and holiday shopping i think you know very few brands are going to be able to stand um continuing to sit out on the sidelines um so I, you know i think give it a couple more months and we'll see pretty much everyone return but still, I think this is a win for other social platforms. You think about Snapchat, TikTok, even Pinterest or, or Twitter. You know, these are, are channels that either have been kind of tested before or brands that might have dipped their toes in the water. Uh, or if it's something like a TikTok where many brands just before this hadn't, hadn't advertised at all. And, and now, you know, that they pulled out of Facebook and Instagram, they diversified their media mix. And I'm sure that brands have seen success in at least one of these other channels. So as they, um, you know, start going back to Facebook and Instagram, um, you know, maybe their budgets aren't going to be the same in, the, in, in those channels as they were before, as they found success elsewhere. So mm -hmm. I, I think brands will return, but other, other channels have definitely uh, gained uh, from this. Yeah, and your point about holiday is actually a really great segue because that's what we were, you know, we've been talking about that, right? Like how long are, are brands really going to continue the, the Facebook boycott? Um, but holiday 2020, you know, I know a lot of people when we started bringing this up are, are thinking that August is too soon to start talking about it. Um, but as direct agents, we're already starting the conversation early with some of our brands because, you know, what a strange holiday season this is going to be, right? This is not going to be like any holiday that we've ever seen before. So that obviously needs more preparation, more planning. So Jackson, can you talk a little bit about how brands are responding to holidays this year and, you know, what some of the recommendations that we're making to some of our brands? Sure. So it, it seems like, you know, people say holiday commercials start earlier and every earlier every year, right? And if you've been on, you know, any of our webinars for the last few months, we've talked about this is that, um, you know, what's been happening this year um, with the pandemic and just with everything in general, it's accelerated trends that have, 
have already been in motion, right? Mm -hmm. Some new trends have kind of have started, but in large part, there's just been a massive acceleration in pre-existing trends. And I think when it comes to holiday shopping, we're going to see some, some major acceleration. Two years, holiday shopping uh, has been shifting more and more towards e-commerce, but, but physical retail has still been huge. But you've seen this year already, you know, many months in advance, uh, stores like Walmart and Target and Best Buy have already said they're going to be closed on Thanksgiving. You know, the, the Black Friday, Cyber Monday, these are major retail shopping days and they are going to be, um, you know, already we're seeing a day of that cut out completely. Um, so there's going to be a huge acceleration in e-commerce growth. And we've already seen um, that people have started shopping for holidays earlier and earlier already this year. And, and we're talking about, you know, they are gifting holidays, Father's Day, Mother's Day, but they're not anywhere near the level of what we see on a Black Friday or Cyber Monday, things like that. Um, you know, we talked about this last month and, and back in May. People were shopping for uh, Mother's Day and Father's Day gifts on Amazon several weeks earlier this year than they had in weeks past. And with, um, with inventory issues that many brands are having with delayed shipping and things like that, I, I really expect to see holiday shopping be done much earlier this year. And I think, you know, some of this is by necessity and just the circumstances, but we also have seen that uh, Amazon is scheduling their, uh, you know, hasn't been announced yet, but it's rumored that Prime Day is going to be in October this year. And that is really going to be like a major piece of holiday shopping for so many people. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I think right now it's, you have to be mobile first. That's the way people are going to be shopping. Uh, and you need to start early and, and um, really have a, a e-commerce first strategy. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. And for everything you were talking about, like shipping delays and things like that, that last day for free shipping messaging that we've seen in the past, like guaranteed by the 24th or 25th, that that's going to be a real challenge. Yeah. Um, Awesome. And then also just so everybody knows, next week, Wednesday at 1.30, we're hosting a webinar on how to level up holiday, the holiday playing field with data and analytics. So we'll chat that link out now. So if you do want to sign up for it, please, um, please do so. And then finally, um, the last thing we wanted to talk about is Walmart Plus. So I know we were just talking about some of the competition between Walmart and Amazon. You know, it's heating up, obviously. And with the introduction of Walmart Plus, it's just going to obviously get get bigger and kind of more robust. So, you know, how is this going to affect Amazon? And then how is it also going to affect how brands kind of like work with, with marketplaces in general? Sure. So uh, for those who haven't read up on this at all, Walmart is taking a, a pretty big step in their competition with Amazon. They're launching a competitor service to Amazon Prime, and it's going to be called Walmart Plus. And it's expected to launch in the coming weeks. And uh, Walmart themselves have been pretty scarce with some of the details, but some of the, some things are starting to leak out. So it looks like it's going to be positioned as a more affordable, but kind of equally robust uh, alternative to Amazon Prime. Some of the main core sorts of uh, benefits. So standard one day shipping, which is actually going to beat Amazon's kind of standard free two day shipping. Um, and it's supposed to be about $20 cheaper, uh, maybe around $98 or $100 a year versus Amazon Prime, which is about uh, 120. Um, but I think, you know, one of the, that one day free shipping um, and same day in, in some categories is huge. And I think that points to the advantage that Walmart has with its huge network of stores. Um, and that's, a, that's an area where uh, Amazon is still trying to scale up. I mean, if you think of a category where Walmart has already had, uh, you know, very fast shipping. It's in grocery where they have about 1500 locations around the country where they're already offering that um, same day uh, delivery for groceries. And you compare that to Amazon with their Whole Foods, they only have 500 locations. So, you know, I, I definitely think price and shipping um, and, you know, the availability of things like curbside pickup as, as a result of all, you know, the retail network of stores, those are all an advantage for, for Walmart Plus. Um, some of the other perks that have been rumored is like member only deals, 
um, maybe some uh, discounts at their gas stations, potentially a streaming service, we'll have to see. But I think really, you know, where, where Amazon has uh, the huge benefit, of course, they're already in um, a majority of households in the United States. So that's, you know, they, they're, are, they're the incumbent. People are largely satisfied with Amazon. They have their e-commerce and entertainment all integrated seamlessly with their hardware, whether it's an Amazon Fire device or an Alexa enabled device. Um, but really, you know, I think this is a big step for Walmart. Um, I think when it comes to uh, scaling your brands, uh, you know, for, for, for advertisers, Amazon has a great solution in their, in their Amazon uh, media group and their Amazon advertising. But I expect, you know, as more people flock towards Walmart as a result of Walmart Plus, Walmart is going to be investing heavily in their uh, advertising marketplace. Uh, and I, you know, I just see this as a big step in, in terms of competition heating up. I do think it's going to take a while for Walmart to, uh, you know, start to be competitive in terms of market share uh, of more premium benefit subscriptions. Yeah, that's a that's one to watch really closely. Um, okay, well, that's about it for this week's 10 minute trends. Um, as always, if you have any questions about anything we covered, feel free to reach out to marketing at directagents.com. And hopefully we see you all next week on the holiday webinar. Thanks so much for everybody who joined and thank you, Jackson.